It's the Endo meeting on February 7th, and we're talking about dot delimited paths. Uh, for all uh, daemon CLI uh, commands, uh, which necessitates some minor changes uh, on the CLI and uh, more changes in the daemon itself. Uh, and uh, this is a follow-up to some work we already did where the uh, lookup function of the uh, mailbox was made variadic, which allows you, if you initiate a lookup from the uh, agent, currently special name self, uh, you can just pass it a uh, pet name paths of arbitrary length. And as long as each resolved value uh, in that path has a lookup method associated with it, it'll just keep going uh, until it reaches the end or a value that does not have a lookup method, in which case it errors. And this allows us to do, um, you know, this makes it more convenient uh, to like uh, use the uh, CLI uh, because you can simply, you know, reference things with paths without having to call eval multiple times or like create intermediary names uh, and that sort of thing. And then I think Chris also has other ideas and ambitions uh, for this feature, which I will give him an opportunity to mention now before I dig into my specific questions. Uh, this is a necessary step toward networking because networks need to be organized into a bin of some kind. And that's going to be a directory that you need to be able to address on a dot limited path. This also would be the fundamental primitive that would allow you to put things in. It could be how we do pins, which is to say things that get recreated immediately when you restart an endo daemon. Uh, network caplets in particular must start at the time that you restart the daemon. Otherwise, um, your peers will not be able to connect back to you. So that's where we are. Sweet. Okay. Uh, oh, and, and also that this is only half of the story. Reading from pet name paths is, is uh, step one. Writing to the end of a pet name path is step two. And that has implications for three-party handoff and stuff. Yes. Uh, and this uh, PR is only attempting to uh, address uh, reading. And... So far, uh, yeah, it's a draft. I've done it for a couple of commits. Uh, Chris has left some comments that I would like to uh, dig into. Uh, and I suppose it may be worth just reviewing um, uh, a couple of things because like what we discovered is, so if we're here, here we're starting at the CLI and I've currently added support uh, reading from um, uh, pet name paths. Uh, to the eval and kill commands. Kill is going to at some time be renamed cancel uh, for those of you watching this in the future. And it just requires like some basic parsing um, uh, inside of the inside of the CLI. Uh, not really much to speak of in terms of the changes required there. Uh, when we get down to the demon itself, uh, we... Uh, get into some of the uh, sort of thornier changes because what we discovered, yes. Also, a note to the people in the distant future we are aware that dot delimited paths just splitting on dot is not going to be sufficient in the eventually we will want a much more sophisticated parser. We have made some simplifying assumptions for now. Um, and uh, what I discovered in the course of implementing, the, implementing this for eval in particular is that we needed a uh, lookup formula because in a uh, pet name path, a pet name path is maybe should be more properly named a lookup path because stuff that's in the path may not be like pet names in the sense that they show up if you call endo list. Um, uh, because you have like the inspector object currently identified by the special name, all caps info, uh, that thing has properties, uh, that will, you know, that you can put in a lookup path and they will resolve the values, but they have neither pet names nor formula identifiers 
associated with them. So we needed uh, to create um, uh, lookup formulas so that we could, you know, get a formula identifier associated with a lookup procedure that is then actually used to retrieve uh, the value uh, that the path is pointing to. I believe we do intend to enumerate them uh, with a list in list, um, but it doesn't do that at this time. Uh, right. And so the, let's see, I believe I put this in mail. Yes. So some changes are likely to be made. Uh, this is not in its final form, uh, but here is where we actually create a uh, lookup formula. And so the ID is derived from, so each, so you have to call lookup uh, like on a specific agent, so host or guest, um, in order to actually uh, do lookup on a path. And so we get the uh, formula identifier of the pet store associated with that agent. Uh, and then we derive the uh, SHA-512 ID uh, from the hash of the uh, pet store formula identifier joined with the uh, lookup path. Uh, and then we store the agent that the lookup is associated with on the formula uh, and the path. And there we go. This leads us to our first question. In the, let's see, in the info, where is the make inspector here? Uh, Right now, when you do an ins uh, when you inspect a lookup formula, you get two paths, agent and path, corresponding to the values of the uh, formula. But uh, you, Chris, suggest that we should do store here instead. And so I'm thinking: so should we store the pet store <laughs> uh, formula identifier in the formula as well? Um, that's that's question one and two. The directory that you mentioned earlier in your discussion of networks uh, or networking, is that going to be an agent or is that going to be something different? And um, yeah, how should we handle that? Yeah, okay. So I'm recommending the name store. It needs to be something that supports lookup. My, the interface is, this is, going to get you an object that has a lookup method. Mm -hmm. um, valid names for that include store hub. There's a they are a generalization of agent. Agents happen to have one, but uh, directories are not agents and also mm -hmm. have, and they're also lookupable, if you will. Um, so Uh, we call them name hubs in general. Um, on the Agor chain, we have name hubs. I think that Christine proposed a name hub for Sprightly um, as part of her contributions to the field of pet name discovery. Um, I'm not, yeah, it could be hub. Uh, hub is a thing with lookup and presumably also maybe list Mm -hmm. uh, maybe reverse lookup, yada yada. I don't know. Uh, the important thing, at least for this case, is that it must be lookupable. Um, okay. And the agent is too specific. Mm -hmm. Now, oh. as whether it needs to actually be the formula identifier of a pet store, I don't know. Probably not. Pet store, no, it shouldn't. It can't be the pet store because the pet store lookup method does something else. Yeah, it's not it's not variadic. Yeah. Oh, uh, not only is it doesn't have to be variadic because you're only going to use it with one argument in this um in this invocation case. Um, but it has to return a value and look up on pet store returns a formula identifier. Mm. Which is to say it probably ought to be renamed. <laughs> um there's <laughs> yeah. Uh, there's a, um, yeah, it has not yet been realized in the branch, but 
before all is said and done, one of the things that will have to be done is the creation of uh, an ons locator API. And locate is a function that takes a pet name and returns a formula identifier. <laughs> so uh, that's a sensible thing. We could we could rename it locate on pet store hmm. um as well as reverse locate anyhow the uh yeah so yeah the, the this could be hub or it could be store okay shouldn't uh, be agent shouldn't be directory maybe that's a, yeah could be directory if agent and guest if agents are 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 directories i i don't know yeah let's run and... with a tentative answer i don't care <laughs> <laughs> solid then um so the yeah so do we want so he, this comment here i think we may have answered this so do we want lookup to work for all the formula types that contain a pet store which would include host guest and directory um eventually directory we could insist that the formula identifier corresponds to the underlying pet store i did make that change uh, previously and, I was... we, and we just decided that that was not the right change to make <laughs> uh -oh. <laughs> so wait i should not use the pet store formula identifier to derive the id of the lookup formula because right because the method is because the be method to locate yeah mm -hmm. and, and it yeah exactly it doesn't it doesn't implement the interface that we want right so for now i should use so then i should just use the agent for now and then when we introduce directories whatever category of thing thing that has yeah. lookup yeah. Uh, if that ends up being we'll set we'll fix that at that time sure the um or fewer purges in the distant though let's start Let's start with a general name, and yeah, uh, because the form the formulas are ink across restart or across uh, mm -hmm. yep restarts. Uh, so we should start with a general name. So like, not use the name agent uh, to describe this thing. I yeah, I think so. Uh, I think so we can pick the landing with either hub or store, one or the other. Either hub or store. Okay. Uh, of course, you're looking up the agent formula identifier here, mm -hmm. but yeah. Splendid. Um... All right, we already settled that. And then we have some more things here. I think factoring out a lookup formula identifier for path function seems uh, probably. Um, if you want to wait until you've written it twice to make the decision, <laughs> I'm fine mm -hmm. with that too. That's, that's a. Sure. I will, uh, I will not do it until there is a need for it. Uh, and then finally provide lookup formula. Uh, we want this to return the formula identifier. I think it does. I think because, it yeah, because <laughs> it, uh, let's see. Yeah, because it returns provide value for numbered formula which if I look that up in my editor real quick, this is happening off screen share. Uh, yes, uh, the uh, this returns an object with two properties, value and formula identifier. So we're good. Sweet. And then thereby we have avoided that potentially racy reverse lookup. Cool. Yeah, although uh, speaking of the reverse lookup, that was a question that I had about like the uh, implementation of, oh, sorry, like in the, where's terminate? Terminate. Yeah, yes. I, yeah. Mm -hmm. 
so because here okay so your intention with this was to say uh that provide lookup formula should return the formula identifier but it but the thing there is it returns i guess okay yeah no so this is good to talk about because the value that it returns is the value resolved by the lookup formula but the formula identifier is the formula identifier for the lookup formula not the value associated uh with therewith Does that does that break something? Well, it uh, it might break the developer's assumptions if we assume <laughs> that the formula identifier is like, you know, it, it provides some indirection. I suppose. Yeah. Uh, right. It does. It does, and you yeah. If you wait for it to resolve, if you wait for it to settle, and then look at the do the reverse lookup, there's. I mean, the same thing is going to happen for all sorts of promises. Like eventually, when we have, there's a thing in the mailbox, that's kind of a cheat at the moment. Mm -hmm. uh, it would be nice to be able to synchronously so there's a, so the thing about a, a cap tp is that you can pipeline messages to a promise right um it would be nice to be able to pipeline messages to a formula um but at the moment there are a couple of there's a, there's one place maybe two where uh Where a value is for like the response of a the response for a request is in flight, but we don't have a formula identifier for it because it would have to be a formula for an unsettled promise. Mm. Um, and we don't have a we don't have any mechanism in place yet for promises where the thing stored is uh the thing, the thing, the thing stored is um, unsettled. <laughs> where, where, where you, where you keep track of? I had a promise here, and then later settle the settle the resolution by either writing or rewriting a file. Um, You can't write the formula identifier for this for the settled value until after the, the request has been resolved. So if we're first, so in order for us to get to the point where we persist the inbox, we do not currently persist the inbox. We totally should. We will have to come up with a system for having promises, um, and that that pertains here where. You like this is analogous anywhere. We the, the lookup formula identifier is sort of like a promise, an, an identifier for a promise for, to eventually call lookup. Um, mm -hmm. There, I mean, to wit, we might at some point decide to consolidate lookup into eval since eval does that. <laughs> it makes it anyhow. The uh. Yeah. Um yeah, of me. Yeah. Yeah. What, what this is all to say that it is possible for a formula identifier to for multiple formula identifiers to converge on an, on a single value. And mm -hmm. that this will not be the last place that that happens mm -hmm. in in the fullness of time. There's um this is also related to cap TP and promise shortening in general. Promise implementations yeah. are promises are basically in the implementation of a promise is essentially a mailbox for here are the things that are interested in your res resolution, and then those things get forwarded to the next promise in a chain until they get to a settled promise. Um at which point the settled promise is like, okay, every message I've received, I'm going to call a callback with the with the settled value or error. 
<laughs> um, yeah, and in that system, there's something called promise shortening, where you go with like the promise at the head of a queue of resolutions can have its pointer to the next promise in its chain shortened so that it points directly to the end of the resolution chain. And you mm -hmm. do that shortening every time, every time you, uh, every time a message gets passed is like, go back and shorten. Well, it, there are different places where you can do the shortening, but the end of the end result is that at some point you can dynamically just like fast forward to the uh, eventual result. And it's only by doing that fast forward that you can discover cycles. It's like, Hey, wait a second. If I'm pointing back to myself, this is a promise that resolves to itself that's never going to be fulfilled <laughs> that's let's just turn that into a rejection here so that it's so that it's a so the date block is observable um which i will note q does not do but q version 2 would have ah <laughs> um, i'm reasonably certain that native promises have that shortening logic and properly reject cycles Hmm. Right. But um for present purposes, uh are we are we stuck with this racy thing or is there anything well my my theory is that my theory was that if you just take the formula identifier out of the extraction at line 79 mm -hmm. and use it. Mm -hmm. nothing should break if something mm -hmm. does break maybe we do need this reverse lockup but i doubt it Have okay you tried that? no because let's see so what would happen so if we get the formula identifier here it's the formula identifier for the lookup formula associated with this pet name path mm -hmm. then we would skip all of this and go straight down here where we get a controller for that lookup formula and then call oh, term that, and that doesn't have oh, oh, oh so because that oh. would terminate the lookup formula but not necessarily uh -huh. because, because like the because the value that the lookup formula resolves to does not depend on the lookup formula so so the underlying value would not be terminated that's interesting and we're looking at terminate right now we're looking at kill yeah uh, yes we're looking at terminate which is called by uh, the kill command of the cli fascinating <laughs> Huh. Does it end there? Huh. And if you were to call terminate on the lookup form on the lookup. Yeah, okay. All right. I'm convinced. I'm convinced that this. This is a wrinkle. <laughs> this shakes my confidence in the model a little bit. Um, but yeah, I agree it has to be done. Let's see. Does it? Does having the lookup formula... Yeah, it doesn't depend, but should it? Mm. Can it be made to? Oh, because we were talking on that note, we were talking about, um, you know, adding facilities for, you know, making the lookup formula depend on like the underlying names. Underlying uh, so that like subscribing yeah. to the pet store so that like if a name changes, then the formula is invalidated. Mm -hmm. um so it might be the termination on a 
but is that yeah but i guess would that be a unidirectional or a bi-directional dependency relationship no. well so there there's no it, it should propagate outward only hmm. um but so when you create a term so uh so when you create a lookup formula, you have an opportunity to register a termination hook. Mm -hmm. Termination hook could be a thing that does the lookup and then the reverse lookup and then the terminate of the controller on the other side. Mm -hmm. And that might propagate better as well. Mm -hmm. since, a, since a formula can refer to a formula can refer to a formula that might recur. Let's see. So that would be so in make controller for lookup. The only dependency I've introduced is that like if the uh, what's currently called the agent, what will be called the store or the yeah. pub, uh, you know, if that dies, the lookup formula should definitely die. Right, and then we should also have a watcher on the store mm -hmm. where we're observing, and that we might not need to do that in this, but we definitely yeah. need to that work uh that whenever the formula identifier for a particular name in the store changes that that should invalidate that should that, sh that should call this can should cause this con controller to propagate a termination mm -hmm. Yeah, and then the other thing is that you might want to, this might be the, a place where you register a termination hook. Mm -hmm. uh, termination hook registration exists in one other place. That's in the worker. The worker has a termination hook that causes the worker to be actually terminated mm -hmm. <laughs> with a with a with a grace with a graceful stop window. Um the that is to say that everything inside of the worker is probably is is going to receive a cancellation as well and that's their their hint that they have some amount of time to clean up mm. uh, but after that grace after that grace period the it is going to just be killed <laughs> that the worker will be forcefully terminated mm. uh, oh i see so you can you can do uh looking again inside my Editor. you can do terminator on terminate to make to add to add that termination hook. yes exactly exactly and the on terminate hook for a lookup controller would be to follow the lookup to do the reverse lookup and then call the terminate on the resulting controller and i think mm -hmm. that works that works including in the cases where you end up with chains of lookups right mm -hmm. Yes. Although, should that do we all do we want that to? Okay. Yeah. So I guess because I I guess that's fine because like let's imagine like we're in the future situation where one of the names change, mm -hmm. uh, and it and that will cause the lookup formula to be terminated. That will call its on terminate hook. It will attempt to cancel the value that's resolved, but it will fail to resolve that value, or that value will no longer exist by the time like the hook is called. In that case, uh, and that is fine. It could, if it's been deleted, it's because it was. Yeah, if you 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 could win, you could lose the race to to cancel the previous value yeah in which case it would not be an entry in the reverse lookup table the reverse lookup table is a weak map mm -hmm. it's the object in order for in order for it to in order for that to fail the object needs to have been garbage collected
this is going to get a little more tricky when we do <laughs> when we have a finalization registry for the made values and actually do rigorous timely deletion mm -hmm. for now i think that this cascade is is the right way to go mm -hmm. look up form the termination of a lookup formula causes termination of the result of the eventual the eventual sought value um mm -hmm. and, and yeah it's going to have to take take into account that the reverse lookup might fail not just because not just because there's a potential of losing a race, but because not everything that is sought has a corresponding controller. Lookup can give you ephemeral values, not just formulaic values. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so if the so if the terminate hook, if its attempt to terminate the value fails, is that an error or is that a this is fine? This is a, this is fine. Yeah. Uh, uh, if this fails. Uh, catch well it's not so much that you have to catch you shouldn't catch you should return if the reverse lookup returns an empty list ah uh, return early if the reverse lookup returns an empty list yeah All right. Uh, I th think that does it. Uh, um, cool. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think so. Cool. And then, so I'll do that, and then I'm going to continue with the other CLI commands and give them the give them the same treatment. Uh, I guess uh, I might consider splitting the effort up into multiple PRs because it might... Uh, Please yeah, <laughs> yeah. I might just actually carve out what I have just for eval uh, and do that, and it's one thing, and then do and then do kill, and then just go down yeah. the list. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sounds like a plan. Cool. And uh, then we can start talking about deposit. And <laughs> uh, that's next. All right. Sweet. Cool. Uh, that's it for my topic. We got anything else, Aaron? Uh, not for me. All right. Now let's call that a meeting then and see you on the other side. Yep. Very good. Thanks yep. everyone. Cheers.